stage 10, a loop from Neymar and back again, replaced the hoped for run to Timbuktu. Safety concerns had cancelled two stages. But for the locals in Mauritania, a chance to see more action. Not impressed then. Mark Omar continued to exert his stranglehold over the lead in the two-wheel category. With nearly an hour's advantage over Depre, he really didn't need to push too hard. But the Frenchman knew that he had no option after mechanical problems earlier in the event had cost him a lot of time. Attack was all he had to offer. After Volkswagen's issues on the previous day, it was a time for another German manufacturer, albeit with a private run team, to take the ascendance, at least on the stage. For the first time, Qatari driver Nasser El Ataya scored a Dakar stage win for the BMW X-Ray team. Looking at the road book the previous night, he expected the stage to play to his strengths, and so it did. Tight, fast, and very sandy. Hiroshi Masuoka, for the first time almost in the event without dramas, also went quickly. But his Mitsubishi was unlikely to be in the running for an overall win. And Volkswagen's hopes, well, they now rested with Mark Miller, the experienced American, and Carlos Souza also charging hard, but he too was to run into trouble in the desert. More mechanical maladies. This time a broken rear differential. The crew okay. forced to remove the drive shafts to be able to continue. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And now with a two-wheel drive, front-wheel drive turbo diesel to take on the dunes and the sand of Mauritania. Only with two-wheel drives in the front. We broke the, it's broke in the kilometer four or five. It's not a good day. And now we go two-wheel drives. My hand off is down. With the run to Timbuktu cancelled, day 11 was a straightforward liaison section from Neymar to Ayur. Which meant a day in the sun on a long, straight, rather boring tarmac road. Some took their minds off it. And this is what Cyril Dupre was listening to on his road trip. But you still have to keep your eyes on the scenery. Stage 12 then, from Ayun, heading towards the border with Mali and Kay. From Mauritania, a distinct change of scenery as they head into Mali. Less sand, more greenery of a kind. And with the lack of vision that the trees bring comes a lack of direction. All 11 top riders on the stage in a clump and completely and hopelessly lost. Route director David Castera had caught them in one of his favourite traps. The man who eventually came out on top, Spaniard Isidre Esteve, made the best of a bad job. But behind the lead group, a chance for others to shine. Second on the stage, the Portuguese Paulo Gonçalves, his best result on a Dakar special. And the best ever for a Polish rider, Jacek Szakor, took third. One better even than Marek Dabrowski had managed. And for a chance to see what it's really like on the stages, let's ride with the Czech rider, Martin Macek. With his lead gone, Carlos Sainz had no option now but to attack. So do all the Volkswagens, nothing less than maximum effort. But for Stefan Peter Hansel, 
the lead didn't necessarily mean a chance to relax. Navigation again tough. And in the shrubs, the undergrowth and the trees, finding the right route out of dozens of conflicting paths is not always easy, even for the greatest drivers and riders. He rejoins the track right behind Mark Miller. But the Volkswagen's turn of speed puts him back in a dust cloud. Miller still knows he has a lot to do. Charging through the undergrowth, something they wouldn't even have seen two days earlier. And then a few precious seconds while the shrubbery is removed. It won't take long to overheat an engine with a blocked cooling duct. In the truck category, Dutchman Hans Stacy in the man has been leading the competition. And with a handy lead over the Kamaz, he could really do without being lost. And in his dust, Wolfert van Ginkel, who he just passed. Stage 13 from Kays in Mali to Tambukunda, heading for the first time into Senegal. 260 kilometers of special stage. And the rally on two wheels took a dramatic turn. These are the first images from the helicopter camera of race leader Mark Comer. Dazed and confused, but seemingly physically uninjured. Coma didn't even know where he was on the stage or on a liaison when the medical crews got to him. Well, look after you, he said. Where's my bike? Is it okay? Don't you worry about the bike. It's you we're worried about. But we'll look after it for you. The medical helicopter was on hand to take Coma back to the bivouac and out of the rally. With the leader concussed, Cyril Desprez, out on the stage, knew nothing about the fact that he had inherited the lead, but he was glad to hear that his friend and rival was okay. And for Carlos Sainz, another stage, another victory. Nani Roma pulls over to allow Stefan Peter Hansel to go past. Roma and Masuoka now playing backup to Peter Hansel, the leader, and second placed Luke Alphon. Mitsubishi leaving nothing to chance and that meant that the rest of the field including Jutta Kleinschmidt's BMW were closer to the front running pace than before. Kleinschmidt having a trouble free day. Very narrow, there is a truck on the left side, it's narrow on this, it's very narrow. Very narrow. Very narrow. Very narrow. The co-driver Tina Turner pointing out the host of trouble that lays on the stage. And it was found by Christoph Holovic. The previous day he'd had Poland's best ever result on four wheels. A series of high speed jumps. He said in the road book it said there were two holes. In fact there were five or six. Spelling the end of his demise. And this is the slow motion version of how Holovic found the end of the road. Safety is an increasing feature of the Dakar rally. This year, extra strenuous efforts have been made to keep competitors and population apart with rigidly enforced speed limits and extra crowd control. The penultimate day of the rally from Tambakunda into Dakar. 225 kilometers of special and the ride into the city at the end of it.